so I believe he is going to try yeah. to take out those spawners with TNT. Yep, oh, looks brilliant. like he is I'm using just, a yeah. bit of a, yep, sort of a directional cannon to try and, oh, wow. What? That That is impressive. That's awesome. Um, they, they have figured out how to time four TNT in order to, <laughs> this is great, in order to basically use two TNT to knock two other TNT into the gap, and then one of those TNT knocks the other one towards the spawners. Very, very impressive use of TNT. And they are actually taking the, uh, the time to make sure they have uh, at least one blaze spawner left alive if they can help it. That way they can harvest all the blaze powder they need in order to make more fire resistance potions. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're coordinating on this. That's very clever. Because there are some, there is like a brewing sand and stuff that allows the, the players to brew their own potions. So that's very clever. Very clever of them to make sure that they have the capability of doing that. I love this TNT, this use of TNT though. Excellent. So good. They have there it goes. taken out all but one spawner in, <laughs> I it's in, this, spawner. Uh, in this area. What? The it's only thing left yeah. is an Enderman spawner, I believe. Which is not too threatening. Uh, of course, there's still some mobs left here, so I imagine he'll he'll want to really make sure he can't see the spawners. Trazlander can't see the spawners here, so so he's gonna want to just make sure that the spawners are all gone before he does anything. Ha! <laughs> one of the blazes attacking him a little bit, but he'll be okay. Yeah, he is uh, sufficiently geared up and everything, so uh, I think he'll be just fine. I'm not sure if blazes can destroy soul sand. Actually, I believe that. Uh, I'm not sure if Blazes can destroy Soul Sand with their fireballs. Trazlander are able to take out that Blaze, so he will do just fine. I believe Trazlander should be able to safely grab this wool, unless we see some unexpected pressure from the CBs. Uh, in s so, a uh, sort of summary of what's happened so far. Uh, the Whiskey Brigade has provided a lot of PvP pressure and has gathered a lot of resources and they seem a little bit better geared up. Uh, Whiskey Brigade has grabbed the first Cyan Wool from their dungeon whereas uh, the CBs have not grabbed that first Wool. The second Wool is obtained by neither team, although Trislander looks like he's about to grab that second Wool. That is probably the most difficult dungeon, although we do now see uh, the CBs attempting to make their way back down wearing some iron and diamond armor. Third wall has been obtained by the CBs and the CBs have successfully locked down that third wall so far and Whiskey Brigade has failed an attempt to grab that third wall but uh, I think that they have a plan in mind to grab it so we'll have to see how that works out for them. Traz has just picked up the second wall. Still needs to make his way back up but that is not nearly as hard as clearing out that dungeon to begin with, so. Yeah, the CBs haven't made it past that uh, spot where Gramps fell. But they do have that gear to do it, although facing some PvP pressure may be too much for them. We'll have to see. <laughs> like uh, standing on top of a bunch of leaves at the Volcano Third World Dungeon. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if these leaves can be set on fire by the lava, but it'd be... Pretty hilarious to see him just fall down because of leaves. But I don't think that's actually going to happen. Alright, night, second night is approaching. Once again, teams will have a chance to reset their spawn. But more mobs will be spawning, and I think CBs still have yet to light up some large portions of their side. Although, I, I should note that Whiskey Brigade also has failed to light up uh, a lot of their nether the nether rack section towards the end, towards the volcano, and so a lot of mobs are going to be spawning there, and that is somewhere where they will need to, need to be going. They're going to be focusing on that part of the map pretty soon here. Let's see who is this? Uh, Segoy has barricaded himself in at the second wool dungeon and successfully shot down Solitary Wolf, who was trying to make his way further along in the second wool dungeon. I expect to see some very, very serious PvP pressure from Whiskey Brigade, probably in including some TNT cannons uh, as as we move forward. I think they're, they're definitely going to try and lock down the second wall 
because that is uh, it's basically the wall dungeon that they're able to lock down, and that is easiest to lock down at this point. Traz is having some creeper trouble. He was almost up, and then a creeper took out his entire spiral staircase, and he fell down back to the last oh. rung of the second wall. <laughs> yeah, there's another there's another creeper here right next to him. But he has barricaded himself in. He probably recovered all his hit points, and. Let's see, Solitary Wolf, um, like I like I mentioned before, he was making his way back down to try and grab his uh, grab his armor and stuff before it despawned, but he is not wearing anything, and I think he has two people shooting at him from Whiskey Brigade. There are so many pigmen out here on the two volcanoes that they can now be classified as oh. a weapon of mass destruction. Solitary Wolf opted to suicide. He jumped out of the world. I suspect he may have been out of blocks. He was like, yeah. nothing I can do about that. But he was able to, to sort of um, block out a lot of the, the mobs uh, that was corresponding in in uh, sort of the second rung of the second world dungeon. There's a, there's a lot of mob spawners above these signs here. Chris Liner continuing to make his way back up. Sorry, was that? I'm I'm waiting for someone to set off this pigmen nuke. There are literally yeah. like probably a hundred pigmen out here, huh. spread against both sides. Well, probably we'll see CBs uh, do that when uh, Whiskey Brigade does attempt to make their way back up. There are quite a few pigmen, and pigmen can deal a lot of damage very quickly, especially in large groups. I still see a lot of portions of both lanes that are not very well lit up, so... Of course, both teams do have a bit of armor, so they may be able to deal with that. Traz only has one full turn to go before he gets the second wall out of the Bedrock area. Checking on the first dungeon, I still see no action from the CB side. Looks like it's completely untouched. So CBs still only have the third wall. They have been making slow progress on the second wall, but they're going to be facing a lot of PvP pressure, I suspect, very soon. If I remember right, they got the first wall last in the last game as well. I, that's something you'll often see, the just go for the easiest wall last before, uh, because you need to get the other walls before the other team is able to provide serious PvP pressure. <laughs> Trezlaner using a mixture of blocks to make his way back up. He's back up. I haven't seen any wool placed, but I suspect they will place some wool down pretty soon. So that if one of them dies with the wool, it won't be the end of the world. Yes, I have seen some lime green wool placed now for Whiskey Brigade. So Whiskey Brigade has two wools, nice and safe, and I imagine they're now coordinating for their attack on the third wool. I'm willing to bet that they'll leave behind one or two players at the second wall to lock it down and perhaps again attempt some uh, some TNT cannons. Let's see if there's been any approaches on the volcano. Haven't seen anything recently. I see a bunch of mobs clustering up, which can only indicate that there's a player nearby. <laughs> um, at the second wall dungeon for the CBs. Though I don't see any. Hmm. Sure. Ah, Solitary Wolf is geared back up in some iron and gold armor. And it looks like he's going to be attempting the second wall dungeon one more time. If he's a little bit more successful this time, Trizlander is providing some cover. He's wearing diamond armor. I also see Gramps here at the marsh area above the second wall dungeon. Um, I see some TNT being placed. I'm not sure if this is... Yeah, it looks like that was just oh, yeah. to get up on top of the trees. The marsh area. I'm not really sure why they're trying to gain so much ground. Uh, some, so much height, that is. 
but the CBs are just trying to put on some PvP, PvP, yeah, PvP pressure, or maybe they're just trying to go around the marsh area because they have so many mobs spawned in it. Yeah, it looks like Nika and MK are waiting in the lava section for, or the volcano section for anyone to show up, and no one seems to have done so recently. They're expending a lot of, uh, a lot of player resources on that, and and they're not expending that on other parts of the map. So it may hinder their ability to actually obtain the second wool, uh, while while giving time for Whiskey Brigade to sort of entrench themselves. Although I don't see anyone from Whiskey Brigade actually at the second wall right now. Yeah, I'm finding this odd. I'm actually looking for them. Like, where are they? Ah, uh, okay, now right. Uh, there is actually Tre Treslander is yeah Treslander is at the second wall providing some uh, arrow fire. Gramps also wearing a little bit of chain and iron armor. And once again, solitary wolf um, with some iron and chain. Bit more geared up. I believe Solitary is going to make his run on the dungeon, but Gramps and Solitary are trying to team up to take out Treslander and get rid of this suppressing fire. I, I would, I'd be willing to guess that Treslander has probably set his spawn uh, in this area uh, at the second wall dungeon. So even if he does die, he'll be able to just grab his armor again. And again, Sagoy has also uh, sort of entrenched himself in the second wall dungeon. So that is two team members wearing full diamond armor and solitaire wolf once again committing suicide. And you can Run see the there's box. supply disparity here. Uh, Gramps isn't wearing any pants. <laughs> I believe uh, one of the team member over here was wearing iron except for their pants which was a uh, chain. Yeah. I see some iron armor, some extra iron armor for the that uh, Solitary Wolf was wearing before he committed suicide for CBs. But uh, the next day, second, sorry, the third day is about to start, and so teams again won't be able to set their spawn. But they also maybe may face a little bit less mob pressure, and it may be that that's what Whiskey Brigade is waiting for. They don't want the mob pressure as they try to make their way onto the third wall. Still don't see anyone from Whiskey Brigade attempting that third wall. I bet Dire Dwarf has some juicy details of what Whiskey Brigade is up to right now. <laughs> but we'll just, we'll just have to wait for him to come back. Alright, Whiskey Brigade has grabbed the first two wolves and the CBs have grabbed the third wall. So it's sort of an uh, inverted scenario, although CBs probably won't have too much trouble grabbing the first one. Looks like Trazliner might be prepping a cannon here, he just placed a lever down. Love to see that, so we'll check that out as well. Unless it's just for uh, something to do while he's waiting. Right. Just flick it back I, and forth. This is, this is what I'm talking about, um, having so much, so many, you know, having two, half of your team at the volcano, not actually doing anything, just waiting around while your teammates are, are trying to to go for that wool and just not being able to apply enough PvP pressure has given Whiskey Brigade enough time to set up their cannon. And and this cannon, I can imagine being quite devastating. They'll be able to unlock a lot of the mob spawners. Uh, let's see, some of the... They did not actually manage to open up any of the mob spawning on... It looks like the timing was a little too second short. Run. Yeah. And then uh, it's he actually not may have accidentally been shot into oh. his own cannon. Miss, misfire, yes. So that'll put an end to that cannon. Solitary Wolf has made it a bit farther down into second. He's on the third rung of the second wall dungeon, but it only gets harder from here. This is his first time reaching this area. There are some mob spawners here. And of course, being the second team there, everything just gets overflowed with mobs. Right. Solitary Wolf actually facing some PvE problems, not able to make make it uh, past the third rung of the dungeon. So again, he lost a bunch of supplies. I do see he was carrying some potions and some TNT, and of course that armor, and a water bucket too. So 
Um, uh, you know, he may be he may have been planning to use TNT in a similar way to Whiskey Brigade, and there is a finite amount of TNT on this map. <clears throat> Solitary Wolf, once again, like I was talking about earlier, just trying to blitz his way down to grab that grab those supplies. It looks like he will make it though. Uh, and yeah, he has he has made it back up. He's grabbed his supplies. I think these spawners are probably disabled because of the torch here. Well, not all of them. But he's put his armor pack on, and I, th I think he will be able to continue in progress here. Strangely, no PvP pressure from Whiskey Brigade, really. Um, I, they may have been caught out of position, and they actually may not be aware that Solitary Wolf is down there. He made it back there really quickly, so maybe they are like, hey, he's dead. Yeah. We can look away for 40 seconds. Right. And Gramps was providing some PvP cover on the second world dungeon. This will now free up the Whiskey Brigade to take a look around, and I do believe that they have spotted uh, spotted Solitary Wolf. They definitely have, and now he's on fire. Oh my. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. He was still some. You could tell he was looking at his inventory for that water bucket. Yeah. Still some of these uh, silverfish <laughs> in this area at uh, at the second wall dungeon on the CB side. All right, I'm gonna go check. It does look I see a, a diamond armor wearing person on the the last wall dungeon for for Whiskey Brigade. He is leaving the volcano for some reason. I'm not sure what his purpose was. It's Segoy. Um, looks like he is just shooting. Oh my, what a dangerous game they're playing. <laughs> Segoy, I think, accidentally. He may have been aiming happened? for MK and. Yeah, and he was. Pig. He was. He was aiming for MK in the middle of a bunch of pigmen. And. And did he make it out? I don't see that he's died. Uh, hmm. I'm a little confused actually. I, I saw him fall and then he just disappeared. He may have had I an don't enderpearl. see where he went. Ah, uh, uh, there he that's is. That's a good point. He, he enderpearled yeah. away. Did he... Where did he go? He's at the sort of start of the nether section. Okay. Interesting. So, he may have angered the pigmen and in the hopes of trying to kill uh, uh, players on the CB side, and may have worked. Uh, no one was killed by a pig man. Yeah, MK you're right. is pretty uh, well walled off. I'm not sure about Nika. I think he may be too high and too far away for those pigmen to get anger because it's all the pigmen in the same chunk or something like that. I'm not sure the true specifics of what gets angered. I'm not sure either. Solitary wolf taken down once again, attempting that second little dungeon. I expect to see this happen <laughs> a couple more times. But it, he does appear to be making a little bit more progress each time. And you know the fact that the that that dungeon is the the lane is two blocks wide there actually does give them some room to create some cover, which will allow them to get back into the dungeon if they want. Although TNT cannons may provide some hindrance there. Seems to be slowing down a little bit as teams try to push things oh. forward. Well, uh, I actually. It's interesting. There is a tunnel sort of underneath the netherrack in the back of the lane for Whiskey Brigade. They may be sneakily moving in on that wool dungeon. Uh -huh. I think they probably prepared this uh, ahead of time so they knew exactly what they had to do. And. Yeah, there's a big staircase leading up to the volcano. And they should still have their fishing rod of efficiency five, efficiency six, something like that. It, it mines through another act like it's not there. 
Jakash just surfs out of lava. So that is all three wolves. Uh, as long as he gets it out of the netherrack zone, uh, that should be all three for Whiskey Brigade. So he did he use a fire protection potion to make his way through? Oh yeah. It's kind of like watching Reverse Terminator 2. <laughs> so the Sequoia, the Sequoia thing could have been a Reverse Terminator 2. <laughs> the Sequoia thing could have been a distraction. Oh, Jakash was killed by a yeah. zombie pig man. Yeah, they were, um, cockblockers were talking about setting those off if it came down to it. So Jakash was the one carrying the wool, right? Yeah, he had the orange wool. Uh, he has placed a few outside the volcano, though, so it's already safe. It's just a matter of time now. Did he do a pass around? Is that or uh, looks like he walked he all the way make... up? I, I don't see the orange wall, but there's something okay. uh, inside the tunnel there. Let's see, they're uh, they're back or not in the back, but it's actually right below. It's kind of hard yep, to explain. I, it's I there. See some, I see some orange wall actually at the very top. Also, yep. So very good progress for Whiskey Brigade. Uh, things are not looking good for the CBs. They are still having a very hard time at the second wall dungeon. Um, they've lost a lot of armor at this point. And... A bunch of TNT going off, actually. It looks like Solitary Wolf was... Perhaps trying to create a Chaos Cannon. I'm not, I'm not actually sure what happened there. I just caught the end of that. Uh, but... <clears throat> he is wearing some chain and iron armor, so he, he, he's not, uh... Completely un, ungeared here. Making his way further down the dungeon, he's about to hit the second to last rung of the dungeon uh, where there's a bunch of silverfish I think he has been lit on fire perhaps? what it sounds like to me ah no, the, sorry, the silverfish were lit on fire so Solitary Wolf is making some progress but he's gonna, be, he's gonna have to be pretty quick uh, if he wants to beat the Whiskey Brigade and I, I do believe that uh, the the first wool is still untouched by CVs. I will I'm looking check at that. it. I just I just looked. It's, it's still it's still there, still untouched. Wool blocks is unscathed. Just heard some TNT. I believe it was a chaos or some sort of cannon. <clears throat> Looks like the uh, CVs victory monument has also been taken down a peg by a TNT cannon. Mm. I'm curious what that looks like. Pretty interesting layout too. Oh yeah. <laughs> so the the Victory Monument is sort of now a floating island. I mean, it's it's still not that hard to make your way up uh, that by just towering up. But but you are more exposed that... to enemy fire because the last yeah, and... game we had on here it was so close. But both teams were making it up the monument at the same time. Yeah, but Whiskey Brigade did have to take a bit of time to actually build that cannon. So that's an interesting move from Whiskey Brigade. But they love making interesting moves, so. so. I see Segoy heading towards the Victory Monument. I don't know if he has all of the wolves or not. Alright, well, Solitary Wolf is now in the second to last run of that second dungeon. Uh, sort of slowly working his way down. He's not really facing any pressure from Whiskey Brigade, which may indicate that Whiskey Brigade feels confident that they've won the game. Um, Oh, no, Trislander is building a TNT cannon. So, uh, they're not giving up, or they're not ending quite yet. Oh, but looks like MK did place the last wool. No. Uh, he did not, okay. Said GG for no reason. No wolves have been placed, or maybe he's, he's he, okay, he there knows we go. what's going on. Preemptive. <laughs> Cyan, lime green, and orange. There we go. That is it. Whiskey Brigade has won the tournament. They'll be getting the little sandstone figures <laughs> from mine twice. Very cool. I don't think any sandstone figure will be able to capture Ziat's eyebrows. <laughs> well, I think there's no doubt that Whiskey Brigade earned that win. Uh, very, very well played game. I mean, for both teams, but Whiskey Brigade blew me away with, with some of the strategies they employed. And they definitely had their strategy together. Very, very well played. And now I hear zombies beating down the door. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, so uh, once again, Whiskey Brigade has won the tournament. CB's come in second. Now, there has been some talk of a uh, showdown match between the winners of the first tournament and the second tournament. So we'll have to see if uh, if the Red Sooners end up playing Whiskey Brigade, but nothing has been finalized, so we'll have to see. Whew. I think once, once Dyrdorf gets back in here, we probably pull in a member of each team for a little post-game interview. Aw, oh, yeah. Yeah, we saw a lot of uh, clever stuff. Actually, we'll wait till they're in here. Yeah, I've uh, got them lined up. I can pull them in when you guys are ready. We're ready now. Ready. Awesome, I'll grab them right now. Hey, Nika and Traz. Hello. 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 So congratulations, Whiskey Thank Brigade. Thank you. Good job. Condolences to Cockblockers. <laughs> hey, yep. Good job. So it seems like I every... I wish we got a better map pool. Cool. Oh. oh. It's so, so, so you didn't like the, the choices that were presented to you? We're more of a PvP team, and it ended up not being any PvP maps, so that was kind of a moral depleter. I see. But oh well, good game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, those, for those of you watching that are unaware how that how that works, uh, the the teams were presented with with three three choices of maps that were chosen ran chosen randomly from a pool, and each team got to veto one and then veto another. And uh, basically, each team vetoed one, and there were different maps, and this was the map that was left over after the vetoes. Um, so, so I, I guess, uh, yeah. Um, we, I tend to think of Race for Wool as more of competitive PVE, and um, you know, you just have to work around the resources and the materials and how to run the dungeons. And um, with the PvP mix, which we also pvp the crap out of you, Oh, a little bit of trash talk. But, no, I think uh, this is the I, the third very clever thing we've seen from uh, Whiskey Brigade. You had the, the gas turret, the sign um, jumping, and now using the sign to push Silverfish across the lane. Yeah, that was very clever. I'm not sure if uh, if the CBs fully appreciate what happened there. But um, the uh, didn't Whiskey Brigade... Yeah, Whiskey Brigade used, used a sign to break Silverfish blocks and then push the silverfish all the way across the lane and actually awaken other silverfish from from the CB side. I believe yeah, that's what wow. killed uh, one of the uh, cock blockers as they first got into that dungeon. They killed both Gramps and uh, Solitary, I believe. Yeah, they usually they go in there with their, the most armor and stuff in the first run and the, the silverfish surprise. Um, they call for help after you hit them, like f after like two seconds. So yeah. when you hit them, they call for help over there. It's great. I figured that out like a week ago. Silverfish surprise sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, I, I was definitely very surprised. I didn't know the silverfish worked that way. So really, really innovative use. Uh, I love I love to see that in Race for the Wool. I did see you guys actually, uh, or heard actually, not really seen, saw the uh, the ghast egg being set off early. I think you might have been trying to freak people out. I don't know. But uh, either way, I heard that. <laughs> a bit of that. That fishing pole has looting three, or like looting ten on it, or five or something, so you can kill the ghast with it and get a whole bunch of ghast here. Oh. What would you use the ghast here for? Regeneration potions. Um, you could also get, kill the blaze that's in the ghast eggs to get uh, blaze rods for more blaze powder and back up blaze rods for brewing stands and stuff. Yeah, that was definitely one thing that was interesting was listening to uh, the Whiskey Brigaders uh, talking about collecting different supplies like Ender Pearls and Blaze Powder and all that stuff. You guys were very uh, working together to make sure you had enough for the uh, fire resistance potions. Now, I'm a little bit curious because uh, the CBs did recently play this map. Did did uh, Whiskey Brigade, did you watch that footage a lot? Do you feel like you gained a lot of insight into their strategy by doing that? And similarly, uh, uh, CBs, did you try and modify your strategy because you didn't want didn't want to be predictable I guess uh, let's, let's start with CBs well we, we well we have a 
really tight schedule, kind of, with uh, people, Chris being at work, not only on every day except for Sunday and Monday. And so it's hard to practice when Avery's got work, I got work, MK does stuff. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of hard to practice in, in that kind of time frame. So we, we didn't have really much time to modify our strategy Especially that for much. Maps. Yeah, so it was like, ugh, you know, we it would have been better to practice more, I guess, but um, so we could have revised our strategy. But I feel like if things went wrong, we're like the sign, it just seemed to not work for us. And uh, that kind of it got rid of our fishing pole, so we had to go across the soul sand. And the soul sand uh, glitch with the vines makes you get stuck in the block. You need to break the block underneath you to move. And that was uh, really hindering to us as we tried to walk across it. So. Yeah, the damn soul sand. Well, what about you, Whiskey Brigade? Did you, did you study that footage a lot? Did you come up with any specific counters to strategies that... Uh... That, that CBs were going to employ? Well, we just expected that they might change it up and do something a bit different. Um, but beyond that, just kind of expected the unexpected. And, um, one thing we saw is, is that both teams had that sign screw up on them at the beginning of that one match. And kind of figured out it was probably because they were standing up high when the person down low was hitting them, and that might be it. It's weird, but it seemed to work better when they're just sta both standing on a flat surface, and the sign with the knockback seemed to work better. Oh, that's like the opposite for us. It, was, it seemed to work a lot better when it was on top of one of the blocks, but I kept getting shot off of the block that I was standing on, so I had to go lower, and it seemed to not work then. <clears throat> I just ran and dashed it into a Sugoi when he was standing there and knocked some over. Alright, well, uh, I'll ask uh, each team if there's any any part of your strategy that you think that the commentators may have missed that you were particularly proud of. Of course, now that the tournament's over, you don't have to worry about revealing your strategies. So, uh, well, I guess I'll start with the CBs. Uh, I don't think we had very exclusive strategies. I mean, the rush for third kind of... It worked both times. That was nice. Um, the... I guess we need, a, we need a new strategy for second goal, because both times we got messed up on that one. Um, yeah, we really don't have any, like, groundbreaking things that we do on that map. Uh, well, what about you, Whiskey Brigade? Um, well, there's the eight stack of TNT in the beginning that I can use to grab to blow up the uh, diamond blocks at the base of the, uh, <laughs> um, the ore area. And then you saw the first wall thing, probably twice now. Chikash did this time. And uh, then the second wall run. Oh, and the dig around behind um, the mountain. We decided to just go for like a, a second wall lockdown and then just tunnel around to the, uh, the volcano. Right. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> just kind of similar to our strategy in the finals of the the, right, the first Red Minecraft tournament where we tried to lock down the second wall and just use the obsidian floor to, to get to sort of safely work our way around. So it's interesting that, that, that a similar sort of thing worked. Uh, I guess this map is similar enough to direct fire that that's, that's, that's the way it goes. Uh, for the first wall, we actually did have a strategy. I hope my team doesn't hate me for giving it away. They shouldn't. But uh, in the rules, it says that once... Uh, the other team breaks or blows up their wool box. You are you have perfect right to blow it up again. So we were thinking, hey, they'll blow it up, their wool will be all out, and we shoot a cannon inside their wool and blow it up completely. So we actually devised a cannon that would hit right inside of the wool, right where uh, the wool landed, and it pretty much worked every time. But we didn't have time to do it because of all the uh, sign mess ups. So I think I feel like if we had actually done that. The game would have definitely uh, been different. That is uh, that is quite interesting. That would have been it. Very, that would have been interesting to see. And it could have really locked down the the game for you. Well, I mean, if they didn't, if they couldn't complete the victory monument, that would be a uh, instant victory. Well, yeah, complete shutdown. As, uh, no, it, you can um, still shut out the other team for two hours, and uh, oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> and there's a there's yeah. a tiebreaker at the end, but. Yeah, that would have been that would have been interesting to see, but it's it's a very small timing window, and of course with PVP pressure, it's never easy to pull off that sort of timing. No, it's not. Well, uh, 
Unless you guys have any final words. Um, Rixia, I love your eyebrows. Oh, Rixia. Yeah, I, I'm curious. Do you do you feel like the sandstone sculpture will really be able to capture Rixia's eyebrows, or is that just child's play? Uh, not child's play. Uh, fool's errand. That's the one. <laughs> um, I don't know. The Ninja Monkey <laughs> Dog did that that for just kind of randomly. He's kind of more the artist, and he's kind of part of our team for as any kind of spare on Champions of the Map stuff. And uh, he's it was kind of a, of a surprise to the four of us. Honestly, it was great. All right. Well, uh, congratulations to Whiskey Brigade. You'll be getting your MindToys.com. Um, <laughs> Uh, sandstone avatar figures of, of all your players, and and a uh, reminder to everyone: you can use the promo code I L U V R E D D I T. It's on the screen right now. Uh, I love Reddit for uh, for five dollars off your order. So, MindToys.com. Once again, thanks to them for sponsoring it, and congratulations, Whiskey Brigade. Condolences to CBs, but well played. Also, to you guys, you guys did very well in the tournament and played really well. So, can well we done. play some Albox? <laughs> Um, I think that may be getting in her way. I, I'm, I'm not Sweet. sure. I'm not for Zach, do you want to take a moment and um, talk a little bit about the, uh, the open house that's going on next week? Um, they're going to have information posted on RMC, rmct.tv uh, coming up shortly, but do you want to mention anything about that? Two weeks. Um, yeah, it's in... It's in uh, Two weeks. Okay, ignore me, sorry. A Race for Wool 101 event sort of thing. Um, hmm, I've actually there's some people on my stream saying the promo code isn't working, but I'm not really sure what's up with that. Uh, but yeah, there, there's an event in two weeks uh, that is going to be sort of like a race for the wall open house RMCT uh, class <laughs> sort of thing. I'm not, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's it's going to if you are new to the format or want to learn more or want to improve your skills, play some practice matches. There's going to be an event in two weeks. And there's going to be more information posted on the rmct.tv uh, rmct website about that. And <laughs> I'm going to be there too. I'm going to be streaming a lot of it. That may be when the Redstoners versus Whiskey Brigade uh, show-off match, showdown, whatever, <laughs> happens. We have a few more people. We have a few more people attending as well. Uh, um, MC Gamer is going to be there. Uh, Gleason, Brian, uh, Crafted Movie will be there. I signed up the other day too. Right. Dyer will be there. For anyone who really wants to see Dyer in person, get their picture taken with him. Wait, what? Oh god. What did I sign up for? But, um, yes, yeah, so there's going to be, again, more information about that posted on rmct.tv. Uh, that should be really cool. There's also a uh, new, I've, I've been told to sort of promote this, there's a, there's a new champions of the map starting up for direct fire that was the map that the first reddit minecraft tournament was played on uh, so you can go to reddit.com slash r slash champions of the map and there's some more information there about that but that's going to be starting up very soon uh, i think tomorrow is when the information is getting posted that should be pretty cool too okay well that will that will do it for the second uh second red minecraft tournament Thanks again to all the referees and CoStar for letting us use the server. Thanks to MindToys.com for sponsoring. And um, I think, uh, is there going to be a match on Outbox played in, in honor of uh, CoStar? I think so. It says cycling through the map, so. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yes. Thank you guys very much. I think I'm going to kill my recording. And uh, I'll keep live streaming for the Outbox. All right. Thanks, Dyer, for streaming. Thanks, Seth, for streaming. Thanks, Do, for streaming. Thank you all. Thank you. Similarly, awesome. I'm going to kill the recording now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Uh, but I will keep streaming for the outbox match since I expect that to be pretty short. The teams have gotten pretty good at that. <laughs> oh, we haven't played it forever. <laughs> we either. We have not played. It's also the modified version with the uh, obsidian floors. Obsidian floors, so tell us a little bit more about that. Well, instead of bedrock, uh. so the more mobs will spawn.
Because in the new update, uh, mobs don't spawn on bedrock. They all, so they changed the bedrock to obsidian, so more mobs will spawn. Gotcha. I just showed my server, my uh, server list for a bit, but there's nothing in there that actually mattered. I felt Although like everyone knows mine with, with with public servers. Everyone, everyone now knows my my uh, pr private server address is 127.0.0.1. So <laughs> better not let that get out, or people are going to be joining it all the time. It's going to get flooded with people. But... Right. All right, you heard it here. Seth Blaine's private server is 127.0.0.1. Yeah, I don't know how I managed to grab that one. It's uh, the IP real estate people must have been kind of slacking on the job, but I got that one. <laughs> Look at the draw, man. Two, huh? Scam artists. <laughs> All right. Well, this is our box. Uh, this is another race for the wool map. It's a little bit different in that you don't actually grab three colors of wool. You grab two colors of dye and mix them. This was built by CoStar, who uh, previously had commentated a lot of the race for the wool matches in the sec first and second tournaments, and uh, also. Yeah. Also was is hosting this server. So this this match is supposed to be sort of a tribute to him and a thank you for commentating all those matches. Great job. I sad that I don't don't get to commentate with him. He is very professional and, and I I actually love uh, love watching him stream. But yeah, he's got a good voice for it. Yeah. Excellent voice. So this map, uh, there's there's basically some supplies at the beginning. Uh, the map's made of wool. There aren't really a lot of supplies for crafting, but um, but there are plenty of supplies in chests, and there's some weapons and armor and stuff. These are the owl boxes. They contain a bunch of mob spawners. They are made mostly of obsidian, and so they're a bit hard to get through. Each one of them contains each owl box. This is one owl box. Uh, that this is another, and then up there where it says "ow" oh, is the third one. Each one contains a diamond pickaxe, and once you have the diamond pickaxe, you can use that to break into the uh, the the box with the flowers, which will let you get the yellow dye down there. And then this one has a bunch of cave spiders in it, but there is some uh, some red flowers up here. You get the red dye, so you have to mix those two, dye a piece of wool, and way back to the Victor Monument at the beginning and place that wool in it. There are some interesting traps in this map uh, that use the minecarts. So you're able to take an arrow and shoot it and hit a minecart like this one. It will do various things. There's a there's like three or four of them on the map. And this one will drop a bunch of TNT down and take out the stairs here. There's another trap uh, farther up here that will sort of pour a bunch of water into this outbox which basically pushes all the mobs down towards the other end of the outbox. Makes it very hard to navigate. There is another trap up here that you can cause sand to fall into the water pit down here. And that will that sort of gets rid of a easy jump thing. That makes it easy to jump down from high elevations. Okay, cover the map. One nice feature of this map is you can sort of see all of it from one end to the other. Yeah, it's pretty small. A lot of PvP, um, but we have seen some teams get through this map very, very quickly in, I think, less than five minutes. Do you happen to know the official time? Uh, they are on top there. Of head. Yeah, it was about five minutes. Yeah. It was like five minutes, 40 seconds, I believe, something like that. What are we talking about? The the record the uh, yeah you know, the record time on Albox. Uh, in its pre Obsidian days, I think it was as low as five minutes and some change. Nice. There is no um, great record right now, to my knowledge. Now that it's been converted to Obsidian. Yeah, the Obsidian definitely makes it harder. Although once you do grab a diamond pick, you can. Uh, you can manually work your way through those L boxes uh, if you want, but I'm not sure how that how much that changes it. And the main advantage is that if you've taken the map apart, sort of where actually all 
I'll unvanish so you can see me. Sort of where I am right now, if you poke through this wall, you can get access to some goody chests. Right. An extra diamond pick, and I think a uh, pretty good set of armor. Uh oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I had a uh, chicken tortilla soup and a panini I before had, I got here. I had leftover pizza just before we started. I had a bowl of cereal, but it's just not quite doing it for what me. cereal? Um. <laughs> Said with such ur urgency. Uh, uh, the Reese's cereal. <laughs> oh, man. I've never had that, but that sounds entirely disgusting. Reese's? So it's like for fake breakfast? Breakfast? delicious. Well, it's no, like. They're like fake peanut butter, like. Captain Crunch flavored type yeah, stuff, and then and then much. fake chocolate type stuff. It sounds disgusting. Oh, you picked you picked the one day that I ate Reese's cereal. Usually I eat like granola or something. I like honey bunches of oats. I like yeah, that's good too. I like cinnamon life. Honey bunches are gross. That is generally Shut up, the only author. correct answer Shut to up. that question. Do what was that? <laughs> the only correct answer to what cereal you're eating is cinnamon life. Oh yeah. It's the perfect oh, cereal. Alright, so uh, what are we waiting for? Uh, sumo. Sumo. Sumo, go sumo. Go, go. Yes, let's go make this happen. Feels good. Turn it over. It feels good. Feeling good, man. Feeling good. I think the next one will probably be in a bit, but there is, I think there is going to be another one. Yes, uh, yes, a couple of weeks out from now, I believe. Uh, they'll start doing stuff, is all I know. Uh, well, not a couple of weeks, more like a in it in some weeks from now. Yes, <laughs> something like that. Details will be forthcoming <laughs> in the future. At some point in the future, there will be maybe another. Our party line is yes, there will definitely be another one. No, it will not be immediately. Uh, probably starting somewhere toward the end of the summer. Is there any official word on what kind of map pooling it'll use, or uh, whether? Uh, currently, the plan is summer map pool. Um, we would like to incorporate other newer map styles. Um, Attack Defend has been particularly impressive lately. It's kind of uh, been bred into its own interesting new play style, so that would be nice. Um, not entirely certain about that. We've kind of made our name for ourselves as um, Race for the Wool, but uh, we're definitely not afraid to branch out a little. Um, we don't know what the maps would be, but we know that we want to do a smaller map pool. This was an interesting experiment with a large map pool, but um, in many ways it was unsuccessful and we uh, don't mind making a few mistakes as long as we won't make them over again. Yeah, I personally agree with the smaller map pool. Uh, I I know that I... <laughs> oh, that was entertaining. I, I know that I had... I spent a lot of time analyzing direct fire and there's there's no way I could have put that much time into analyzing other maps. Um, from the fans' point of view, it can get a little bit tired watching the same strategies on the same maps. So I understand that, uh, but it's also pretty exhausting from uh, from the team's point of view to try and learn so many different maps. Well, there's also an advantage for the viewers too because they're not looking at the maps in much depth, so they really get confused as to what's going on. So right. fewer maps equals more familiarity with them. All right, a lot easier to learn the maps from the viewers' point of view. Yeah, it sounds like the teams have both agreed they want to do a death match to decide. Like a sumo death match? I think just a uh, death match, death match. Why are they on the sumo ring? <laughs> well, because then they'd spawn in the middle. We should just do make cool, a uh, world at a circle. Team sumo, where you just, if you get knocked out, you're out, and you can't join back in. Yeah, it's to the knockoff. I think that's what they're doing. That sounds fun. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, having this, the team formation at the beginning is going to be really interesting. I don't know how they're... I think they need more space. I'm going to put some glowstone in. Extra glowstone. Glowstone. I'm just going to I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. I think this is wait, wait. the way that people want it to be done. 
Let me add something here. No, it's all wool. I can't do it. Never mind. I, I, like the occasional fire pit would have been nice, but it's all wool, so I can't do that. <laughs> Fewer men leave. <laughs> oh, shouldn't we eight men? Because it's four on each. Ah, never mind. <laughs> Very amusing, though. Ooh, some spider webs on the outside is sort of a. Oh, yes. Oh, it's map. We got some map design going on in here. Or what else? I feel like it needs some one more thing. Just one more thing. Do make an addition. All right, I'm, I'm ready to make an addition. Oh wait, is this in this version? Can you still place mushrooms? <laughs> My addition has been made. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh. <laughs> they sort of jumped the gun a little bit on that, I think, but... Uh, I'm just gonna oh, who's gonna get caught? Everyone's avoiding the spider web. Ooh, but oh, but... Oh, MK's in it! <laughs> oh, he couldn't make it, he couldn't get away. Yeah. And MK killed each other. That's amazing, I didn't even know you could do that with punching. I'm not a fan of the spider web. Yeah. Solitary got stuck in it. Spiderweb changes everything. I should make a whole map entirely of spiderwebs. <laughs> See, look, we're actually trying to push people into the spiderweb in a way. Oh, that is it. Is that it? Ah, oh. still alive. We need to play some mellow high. We should still have it. <laughs> oh, maybe they don't. I don't know. I did it. Is. Oh yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> it does look like uh, Whiskey Brigade has chosen the right side. Wait, uh, that do you was actually enjoyable. Want that? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Just to the hilarity. Starting this uh, rematch kind of deal with the uh, Melahide playing. It's kind of relaxing. Show match. Throw down, show down, bro match, bro down, show down, bro match. <laughs> bro down, bro <laughs> down. I think, I think something Mo broke down. Down. Or, or bro broke Dutroy. Not yet. Put someone wind her back up. The built in levers to start the match here. Looks like it's starting just about now. There's some TNT that signifies the beginning of the match. Oh, yeah, hear the sounds. Oh. Oh, there it is. Here it goes. I love the TNT signifying the start of the match. They're actually still all in the same uh, mumble. Oh, that makes well. it even better. I'll talk. Trazlin are the only one going... Oh, it's Trazlin and Sagoy both going underneath. Sort of rushing ahead. Oh, you're actually calling him Sagoy, his proper name. Sagwa. Sagwax. Sagwax. <laughs> I wouldn't check. They're all fine with it. A bit of... Fall damage for... Oh, wow. Uh, CB is getting pretty far ahead. Like someone <laughs> I heard a creeper trap, explode. No, that was the stair trap, it looks like. Oh! Spider and a skelly just duking it out inside this uh, box here. No, a solitary wolf finishing off. Stair like trap the hasn't been set up. Pretty well here, actually. They've uh, oh, there's... made it up the first tower, and it looks like they may have secured one of the diamond picks. Or, well... What? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But it's because not enough mobs have spawned in there yet, I guess. We'll fly around solitary, a bit. yeah. So it has blocked up the water trap. MK has taken a sniping position on top of the yellow flower tower. He's the power on top of the yellow flower tower. 
CBs in what I would call a commanding lead so far, <laughs> after about 30 seconds into the match. Sagwa fighting a skeleton in the first out or the second out box. There goes the water trap for the Whiskey Brigade oh, side. Just as Sagoy is making it to the top. I believe he'll be able to block that off pretty quickly, though. But a zombie spawned right behind him torches. as soon as that happened. Let's see if he notices. I'm not... Advantage. Nope, he doesn't notice. Oh, I am. Okay. Zimbies. Zomberts. MK building a little bridge across. Gathering up more wool. Uh, he will be moving up to the 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 uh, third owl box. Grab that last wool. Or getting a better sniping position. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Oh, well, maybe. Well, he has started shooting. <laughs> so so many arrows fi firing down on Jakash and uh, Segoy here. Brixiet also joining them. Uh, CBs have a much better sniping position. Should take the the high ground here. Oh, they did set off the sand trap um, on the whiskey breed side too. Yeah, in offline, well, not like offline practice, but uh, in non-tournament practice, this is a pretty popular map for people to play. So I imagine they've gotten lots of uh, practice here. Although they said that they hadn't played it too much recently, so... <laughs> I want some chicken of the land. <laughs> That's kind of an inside joke. Oh, it just reminds me of the SNL sketch with the... Uh, uh, what's her face? The musical artist, Blonde. I don't know. It's not really descriptive. <laughs> Good story. It's, uh... <laughs> thank you for that. Like this if you cry every time. Ah, uh, they have a Skype phone going, sounds like. They're communicating. What? Yeah, it looks like the owl boxes have owed themselves up a lot in terms of mobs. Or at least the large one. Are they back to the brim? Uh, if they had brims, they would be, but they don't have brims, so... Uh... Hey, you're right, MK isn't even... No one is, to my knowledge, attempting to grab that. Oh, never mind! Huh. Just kidding. Looks like uh, Solitary Wolf is actually dropping down a piece of die and a pickaxe. And that should do it. Did he go up I on need the to do is side? Oh, he must have blitzed through. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not die. It's apples. But he did drop down a diamond pickaxe. Actually, they may have fallen out of the world. Apples are dangerously close to the edge. Don't see the diamond pickaxe. Solitary Wolf jumping down into the water. Um, but he was all the way up there. I'm sure he has the the die. Let's hope he doesn't pull a Chris and die the wool or or die the wool red. <laughs> well, I actually haven't seen. Oh no, they they do have the. Are they grab right now? Grabbing the yellow wool. They just took their time with that. Uh, Gramps is grabbing the yellow die. That is. Uh, so that just that should be just about it. I just need to return that to the monuments, and that'll be game. Seen any progress really on Whiskey Breed's side towards that second tie? CB is really returning the favor here for all that PvP, PvP pressure that they were facing in the uh, match in Arcane Realm. Oh yeah. Maybe they should just, like, win the match and then not tell them. And just keep PvP and then be like, oh yeah! <laughs> oh, 
I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of floor pin here. You could build a whole house around it and everything. <laughs> Settle down, have a family. Get three or four generations of CBs out. <laughs> the Mosquito Grade finally comes back and they're like, no! How could you remarry? Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> just there's that whole story pop up in my head. Did you just make Race for Wolf fanfic? I <laughs> think that's what just slash fic. <laughs> Oh, I just cut that hilariousness on camera. Solitaire Wolf's like, hey guys, don't mind me, I'm totally not doing a victory run as he runs into the void. And you can just hear all his teammates go, oh. Well, I'm sure they have other wool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's been funny, though. Now, I guess it's hard to set up a family and remarry if you're all in a shared lobby together on Mumble. See, I, I was imagining that the Whiskey Brigade and the, uh, and the CBs he headed out for battle, and, and the Whiskey Brigade never came back, so that when, when the Cockblockers came back, they remarried Whiskey Brigade's wives. <laughs> oh, MK getting shot. And then had like so... three generations of kids by the time they got back. Whiskey Brigade is in some real progress. And Rebaldi intermarried, and three generations later, they'll never remember why they started fighting in the first place. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> Slash fic rarely does. Like, I had this weird dream last night where first terrorist blew up this giant, like, uh, it looked kind of like a Tesla tower from uh, Red Alert, only it was actually some sort of, like, two gigawatt power generator, and then suddenly giant robots landed and they were going around blowing stuff up. And I, and I hid in the closet. Dreaming my Dutroid. Giant robots. <laughs> and Tesla Towers. You know, I think... I think all of the CBs died, and they didn't get the wool back, and it, and it actually looked in some chests. I didn't see any... any orange dye, orange wool, or anything. It'll be really hard for them to get back up to the red if they didn't save any. Yeah. Because and they may not they even... Blessed it. I guess they don't need the pick anymore. So, running off to the void may have just cost them the pride that they would have gotten from this match. Let's see if there's been any attempts on the owl box by... Whiskey Brigade. Whiskey Bravo. I don't think so. Hey, we may actually get into nighttime. Oh, and no one's lit anything up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Creeper holes everywhere. Wow. Whiskey Brigade finally locking down all that PvP action. Three members, two members of Super Eight actually making their way through this outbox. Oh yeah. <laughs> their huh? Three quarters of their sand trap was set off. Uh, sorry, of the clock walkers. Uh, that can happen sometimes, where the sand sort of gets destroyed because it lands on an open piston or something. Oh, that's interesting. This is a match of healing. Both teams are having fun with each other. Oh yeah. <laughs> the 
Sug like walks is inside the outbox killing some zombies. And he's too cool for a hat. Too cool for school. No oh, one's too cool for a hat. We should tweet Jeb, too hey, can I wear a cool. hat backwards? <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> what direction do you want to put your hat on? Oh, did you notice that in the in the most recent update, silverfish blocks are known as like monster egg block? <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that means that they're gonna enable it so that it can be tagged with an individual monster like ID instead of always being silverfish. Break block it creeper. Or evil. Oh, break block it creeper. Uh, I I doubt it because there's not enough metadata in there for that, and it's not a there's no tile entity. So. I mean, there's only four bits of metadata. I guess you could get a few entity IDs, but it, it... Oh, apparently it's been like that for a long time. Aw. Because I know that they increased the number of block types up to something gigantic now. Yeah. Uh, it's possible they'll, they'll make other... blocks, but I don't think they'll, they'll change that block... to do it. You've been having fun making those filters. Oh, oh. yeah. Did you do those new in Python? Today. Yep. What's the new one? Unless you're gonna... Let's no, I just, I just released it oh. earlier today. Yeah. It's, uh, basically, you tell it where you want the wire to start, where you want that wire to end, and any points that you want the wire to go through, and it'll just make a, a wire for you, redstone wire. Oh, nice. It's pretty useful for making long wires, like especially ones that go like straight up or down. You, you don't want to build those like spiral configurations, or whatever. It's also when you're building I've, it by hand. There's a lot of uh, if you're building it in a game, you sort of get in the way with blocks that you don't really need to deal with. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna save me a lot of time when I'm building stuff. I was thinking about writing one that you simply select an area and then it will like randomly break glass, turn cobblestone into gravel, and oh yeah, yeah, like a, like a decay slash ruination thing. Just in, in, insert something awesome, get a ruin out of it. Yeah, it changes cobblestone to mossy cobblestone sometimes, yeah. and yeah. yeah, I was thinking of something like that, or maybe something that like turned your buildings into like hell buildings, or like turned your terrain into hell basically. Yeah. It'd be sort of it'd use some nether stuff and. Just swap brick Whatever. and stone for another brick. That would work well. And you could add like fire. Oh yeah, with the actually with the ruins, I was thinking you could add uh, like cobwebs in the corners of rooms and stuff. That'd be pretty cool too. That sort of reminded me of what I did for uh, the Soba Blackout Day on my Minecraft server, where I uh, wrote a quick little bash script to convert every block in my server into. Either black wool, gray wool, white wool, and other dark blocks. Mm. So I blacked out my server. <laughs> That's cute. Whisper Gate has reached the red flowers. And they took them all, which we have seen be a problem in the past. <laughs> Especially if you just run into the void. Let's try to push him off. Oh no! That wasn't he, me. Wow, he almost just fell into the void. I don't know if that was intentional or not. Uh, I still see the wool. Yeah, there's still plenty of wool, though. Yeah. Lying around. <laughs> that would have been pretty, pretty hilarious if he did fall off with all that. Well, his teammates need to get there. Five minute counter has started. Yeah. But this map is pretty small. I don't, I don't imagine the whiskey breed will have too much. Well, I imagine they that. get here as a creeper follows behind them, and then it's suddenly all oh. is gone. Yeah, that's true. I would love to see a creeper spawn right here. That'd be pretty hilarious. Nah. He's got it. Now, did they ever access the yellow flower pot? Looks like they did. I see two yellow wool in this chest, too. Looks like a creeper got MK. Ok, 
Grimisha says, do you check the XP? What if you want to enchant stuff? There are no enchanting tables and no ways to construct them on this map. I still remember playing this, uh, playing this map after one of the, uh, one of the RMCT1 games, and we didn't really know our way around it. It was just very, very frustrating. Oh, I remember kicking your ass there. Oh, I got so frustrated. You have no idea, Detroit. It was so awesome. I, I remember how it started. I got, like, two kills almost immediately, and I think you were one of them. Mm -hmm. Probably. I was like, oh yeah. And then we, we, we held the tower and that was it. Yeah. Was it that one or was that Ko's birthday? No, I wasn't at Ko's birthday. Oh. My birthday's coming up. You're invited. Oh, cool. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Just a little probably mega stream. You ever played Mega Man 3? Mega Man 3, uh, I think I've played it just a little bit, but I haven't okay. played it all the way through. I haven't talked to him yet, but I want to challenge uh, Cilantro to Mega Man, or he, I'm going to let him challenge me to Mega Man 3, because I challenged him <laughs> Mario 2, and I and I won, and, he, and he's been wanting to do a Mega Man game. It's just like a speed run? Yeah, just, uh, I have him most likely on, maybe Milby. It'll be funny and awesome. Because Milby's been well, doing gonna... all the Mega Man games on his stream. So he'll probably mm. win. Yeah. But you know what? Coming in seconds, okay. That is going to wreck the map. <laughs> fire over. Oh, you'd be surprised. Oh, right. we, we, Smash we actually, is over. Whiskey Raid did win. We tested that out okay. a lot. And it, it isn't as bad as you'd think. Unless TNT goes out everywhere. <laughs> How would that happen, Detroit? I don't know. But yeah, that was a good game. Yeah. More contention than usual just because of uh PvP falling off with uh, all the tea, all the all the wool and Probably because of the mobs too. A mobs bit. everywhere. So what now? I think I need to end my stream. Okay. Good yep. luck. Do you doing uh, community day? I am. Awesome. I um, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I got to, I got to join you guys for for the last few matches of the Red Minecraft tournament. Me too, man. It's been good to have you on. And uh, probably probably join you guys again for the <laughs> for the third Reddit tournament. Participant Ooh, awesome or commentary? Cakes. Um, hard to say at this point. <laughs> Not sure. I know you talked about it. If there was a smaller map pool, you might reactivate the redstoners. Yeah, I don't know. Put the torch down, as it were. Uh oh. No plans at this point. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably, I'll almost certainly either be commentating or playing. Awesome, man. I'm looking forward to it. Alright, well, that will do it for my stream. Thanks to everyone watching. Thanks to the moderators, especially Saucepot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Big hearts to sauce spot. Yeah. Alright. Well that's about it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys later. 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 And uh I think I'm keeping mine going for now. Uh do you keeping yours going until you switch over or what? Um What's your plan? That's a good question. I think I am going to bounce my stream and tweak some settings. Understandable. Minecraft Community Day, I guess? Yep. Awesome. Actually, let me get the... Uh, off there, I will get... Let's get that up top. Oh, that's fine, actually. Let me get out of there. Hey, author.
Bro.